Welcome to the 700 Club. A major change is underway in the economy, and it will affect every American. Guess what? Higher interest rates are coming your way. That means higher interest rates for mortgages, for car payments, and other loans. But higher rates could be good for some people. Here's reporter Jennifer Wishon. Although America's economy is starting to grow again, the industry at the center of the economic bust continues to struggle. We have yet to see evidence of a sustained recovery in the housing market. And now there's talk of raising interest rates. Thomas Honig, president of the Kansas City Federal Reserve Bank, says the Fed should start raising rates soon. He warns leaving them near zero increases the risk of inflation. But other members of the Fed may not agree, so it may be a while before the Fed starts to hike short-term rates. But longer-term rates have already been climbing, and Americans will definitely feel the difference. People taking out loans for cars and houses will get less bang for their borrowed buck. According to the Association of Realtors, for every one percentage point rates rise, 300 to 400,000 would-be buyers are priced out of the market in a given year. The good news is for people who save money. They'll earn at least a little more interest on their savings accounts and other investments like CDs. Higher interest rates will also have an impact on the biggest borrower of all, the federal government. Paying off interest on those huge federal deficits could get more and more expensive in the years ahead. By some estimates, the interest costs alone will reach $840 billion by the year 2020. Jennifer Wishant, CBN News, Washington. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, it is a shocking thing. Uh, I guess if there's a mortgage, you don't have to worry about Refinancing. Anything. Well, oh, a lot of people mortgage. like to refinance though, yeah, to get a to go from 30 to 15 to get a fixed rate if you have an arm to you know it's yeah well it's almost too late they they were waiting and the rates are going to go up pretty drastically although the Fed itself this is one Fed governor talked about raising rates Bernanke and the rest of the crew said. Well, no, we're not going to raise rates yet, but we'll see. So uh, it's coming. If you're thinking about doing <clears throat> oh, yeah. it, do it today. Well, right? To think the hit on the United States government, though, when you, you think of it, it, by 2020, you're looking at in excess of $800 billion in interest payments on the federal debt. What's going to be left for anything? Well, the answer is hardly anything. Plus, those who uh, went out and bought Treasury bonds are getting hammered you know the the bond bond yields go up the uh, market value uh, of the you know, the market price of the of the bonds has gone down so they're in inverse relation to the to the interest rates and uh, i think some people are going to lose a lot of money who who i mean who would have put money in a in a zero yielding instrument anyhow yeah. Well, not, not you smart. hope not many <laughs> well a lot of them did because yeah. it was quote the ultimate safety Big joke. Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories from the CBN newsroom. Lee? Pet rescue workers began the day looking for survivors from Monday's mine disaster in Montcole, West Virginia. Our Wendy Griffith is there. She reports that Christians in that community are finding comfort in knowing that regardless of what happened, there is hope beyond this life. That's why the Easter message of going of Jesus coming out of the tomb was most appropriate here because uh, those people that came out of that tomb, even the 25 that were found uh, dead in the tomb, there's, God has life on the other side of that. That is what faith is about. Residents gathered at this Assemblies of God Church Wednesday night to pray for the miners and their families. I mean, you know, this world we're gonna have tribulation, but in heaven you don't have to worry about it. You know, you'll be yeah. safe in Jesus' arm. Praise yeah. God. Meanwhile, in nearby Cabin Creek, home to four of the miners who died in Monday's explosion at the Upper Big Branch Mine, hundreds gathered for a candlelight vigil in their honor. He was the best dad in the world. Timmy Davis Jr. lost three family members in one day: his father and two cousins. He loves his job. He's a good man, good father. He loved to hunt and fish, spend time with his family. Others were just thanking God that their loved ones got out alive. We had an 18 year old cousin um, who was there, and it was shift change, and he got out, but we did know three others that died. West Virginians are known for being strong and resilient in times of tragedy, but Reverend Sparks says it's the church that brings hope. The scripture says that no matter how dark it is, that 
God finds light in that dark. And when you have a situation like we're still waiting for a miracle for four that are down in that darkness, uh, that scripture becomes even more powerful. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, Mont Cole, West Virginia. You know, Pat, as Wendy's mentioned in that report, uh, West Virginians are resilient people. They love the Lord. Beautiful people. I, I uh, was born on the city in, or town in Virginia. It's on the border of West Virginia. And I, I really have a feeling for the folks uh, who mm -hmm. live over there. <clears throat> and also those coal miners, man, it is a nasty job. And they do it to earn a living, but they, they do it because they, they uh, you know, want to contribute something, and it contributes enormously. But uh, uh, again, they aren't blaming Massey, but the federal government has started to blame Massey, and people like us are blaming Massey. Massey was sloppy in the way they, they did safety. There's just no doubt about it. That mine wasn't safe. They've been cited before. And um, they're still reaping in huge profits, and people die. You know, you you talk about greedy corporations. Well, this is, you know, that in spades. You know, I, and then you feel for these men who go back in. Now they're they're releasing some of these toxic gases, and then they have yeah. to go back in and find their family members and friends. That I mean, it's beyond. It's ghoulish and difficult, and 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 very very heart rending, especially for the survivors. So continue to pray for those folks in Mont. Cole, West Virginia. Lee? President Obama and his Russian counterpart, Dmitry Medvedev, signed a landmark treaty to reduce both countries' nuclear arsenals. The ceremony took place today in Prague, Czech Republic. The pact between the former Cold War rivals shrinks the arsenals by about a third. President Obama calls the treaty an important milestone for nuclear security and U.S. Russian relations. Mr. Obama is confident that the U.S. Senate will ratify the measure. Russia's legislature also has to approve it. Smoking may increase the risk of multiple sclerosis. A new study finds a consistent link between MS, smoking, and the body's immune response to the Epstein-Barr virus. That virus is often found in people with MS. Smokers were twice as likely to have MS as those who had never smoked. Multiple sclerosis it is an, an incurable condition. It's the most common disabling neurological disease among young adults in the U.S. and affects more than a million people worldwide. An asteroid will be passing near Earth tonight. It will be just inside the moon's orbit, about 223,000 miles away. The asteroid was only recently discovered. It's about 71 feet wide. It's the second asteroid to pass close to Earth this year. One about 40 feet wide came within 80,000 miles of Earth back in January. NASA constantly watches out for asteroids and comets that could fly or even hit the Earth. Pat? <laughs> well, when you read the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing that fulfills the prophecies that Jesus Christ gave us than a hit in Earth or on Earth by an asteroid. There's nothing that, that fulfills the sea and the waves roaring, the signs in the heaven, men's hearts failing them for fear, etc. Cetera, it's cetera. a flaming mountain that is flaming thrown into mountain. the sea. Huh? I saw an angel fly in the midst of heaven having a, a flaming mountain, and he cast it into the sea, and a third of the ships were destroyed. That's what you have in Revelation. Uh, there is nothing that fulfills that except an asteroid. And so how is it going to happen? It's going to be unpleasant. But if you'd like to see a fictional account of what's going to happen, I wrote a book called The End of the Age. I, it's probably out of print right now, but you can get some copies someplace. But it describes in detail what would happen. It, 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 all, it all happens very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And impacts the whole world. <clears throat> it, oh, oh, absolutely. The entire world. I mean, when one of these things hits. Uh, and because this is a, a baby, what they saw up there today, but uh, the, the ones that I was thinking about, were, it was about a kilometer in diameter, which is six-tenths of a mile. It's not a great big thing, but boy, can it make a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Terry? Well, in the 1940s, silence from Christians may have cost six million Jews their lives. Just ahead, find out how one woman is making sure that silence never happens again. Still ahead. I noticed ski patrol was out there ushering people off the mountain. Day one, lost. I didn't sleep a wink. I sat there shivering. Day three, frostbite. When I took my socks off, my feet were black and purple. On day five, hypothermia. I could have sworn it was the Grim Reaper kind of laughing and giggling at me. 
How this snowboarder cheated death. There's no way I'm going to let my parents bury me. On today's 700 Club. This is for legs. Legs that take a stand. Curves works for your legs. Try Curves and get 30 days for just $30. This is for arms. Arms that are too important to hide. Curves works for your arms. Now get 30 days for just $30. This is for healthy, happy hearts. Curves works for your heart and every other part of you. Our 30-minute circuit works every major muscle group, two muscles at a time. So you get a total body workout that can burn up to 500 calories. All with a trainer to teach and motivate. Call Curves today to get 30 days on our proven circuit for just $30. And join us in improving the lives of women everywhere. Curves. Let's all be stronger together. Tomorrow. Higher prices at the grocery store and fewer crops on the farmland. I didn't even get enough to plant 50 acres of tomatoes. See what's behind California's water wars. They're going to take the Garden of Eden and they're destroying it. Plus, it'll make you snap your fingers. It'll make you snap. Get the secret ingredient to the best soul food in the South. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> it's so good. Tomorrow on the 700 Club. This Sunday is Holocaust Remembrance Day. Sixty-five years ago, American troops stormed into Germany as the Third Reich crumbled. But once they arrived, they made a horrifying discovery. Of the 250,000 Jewish prisoners held at Buchenwald, only 4,000 were still alive when American forces entered the prison. More camps were then discovered throughout Germany and occupied Europe where six million Jews perished in what's now known as the Holocaust. General Dwight Eisenhower immediately ordered the Army Corps of Engineers to film the camps. Otherwise, he wrote, people will say that things like this just didn't happen. Yet today, despite the mountains of evidence, the number of Holocaust deniers is growing, and a new worldwide wave of anti-Semitism is reaching levels not seen since the rise of Nazi Germany. In her film, The Forgotten People, Christianity and the Holocaust, producer Lori Cardoza Moore documents this growing hatred of the Jews, the parallels between Nazism and radical Islam, and why Christians must take a stand for justice and defend the people and nation of Israel. Lori Cardoza Moore produced this documentary, and she joins us now, and it's a pleasure to welcome you. Thank you. Good for morning, Mr. Yeah. Robertson. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having me. What got you going on this Holocaust? Is this something from way back in your childhood that you're concerned about? Well, actually, it started when I um, came to faith in yeah. the Lord. I became a believer. I started studying the scriptures. And it was 17 years later that I saw who Israel was and who the Jewish people were in the scriptures. And I saw the injustice that has been perpetrated mm -hmm. against them throughout history. I started connecting the dots politically and watching what was happening on a world front. Mm -hmm. And I, as a film producer, um, mm -hmm. I said, you know what, this has got to stop. Yeah. We've got to educate the Christians. We've got to get the Christians on board. And what better way than to use a film to document that history? Uh -huh. Part of what you have to say is the inability or the uh, unwillingness of the Christians to step up to the Jews. There were a few noble people like Corey Ten Boom and her family, but not many. No, sir. In fact, we're seeing similar parallels to what yeah. happened back then in Germany. If we remember, historically, Germany was considered a Christian nation at that sure. time. It was one of the most educated na nations as well. But why did so many Christians sit back silently? Why not, while not only six, six million Jews were murdered, but five million other people, including Christians as well? The, um, uh, I've been given a book that has some of the writings of people like Martin Luther and others 
there was virulent anti-Semitism in the Christian church all the way through the medieval period. One of the things that we deal with in this film is we go back and we document that history of anti-Semitism within Christianity, but we connect it to the new anti-Semitism to show that it's not, anti-Semitism now is not mm -hmm. just anti-Jewish, it's anti-Israel and anti-Zionist as well. And what we're trying to get Christians to do is connect those dots to realize we have to speak out now. It's our turn. This is an opportunity for, for the church to rise up. It could be mm -hmm. our greatest opportunity to, to redeem that which we did not do back then. You know, there's what's called replacement theology, and there are a lot of Christians say, well, uh, the Jews don't matter, Israel isn't really God's chosen people, and that uh, the church uh, received all of the blessings that God mentioned for Israel. Right. Uh, that, that's replacement. Have you, you right. run into that? I'm very aware of that, and I think the reason why that is is because we don't study the Hebrew roots of our faith. We don't study the Old Testament. We say mm -hmm. it's old. It's, it's undone, and we're... You know, the, the word says that you will know the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. If we don't go back to the beginning, understand our Hebrew roots, we won't understand who we are and what we're called to yeah. and who the Jewish people are. They're our brethren in the faith. And we were grafted in. We were the ones that were outside of the commonwealth of Israel at that time. Mm -hmm. And Paul dealt with this very clearly in Ephesians, that you've been now been brought near. So and we're part of that now, that commonwealth. You know, Jesus talked about the time when uh, the sheep were separated from the goats, you remember? Oh, the final yes. judge? And he says, uh, uh, inasmuch as you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren. So you've mm -hmm. got sheep, goats, and brethren. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's some say, well, he's talking about Christians. And the others say, well, he's talking about Jews. How, how did you... Uh, That's exactly how I interpret it, my brethren. He's talking about his Jewish brethren. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And unfortunately, we have not connected those dots. So, according to that, the nations of the earth are going to be judged in relation to what they do to the Jews among them. Yes, look at what's happening to the United States of America. Mm -hmm. We're, we will not honor the covenant God made with them, including that land. And that, the covenant is their foundation. Look at our foundation now. Our constitution yeah. is now being challenged in our country. What about uh, uh, relative Islam? You, you've studied the, in this documentary the, the Nazis. Do you see parallels now with the militant Islam? Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, Hitler was a, a good friend of the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem mm -hmm. at the time. There was In the film, in the documentary, we have an, an image of the um, Grand Mufti shaking the hand of Adolf Hitler. There was almost a spiritual baton that was passed between the two. Because mm -hmm. even though anti-Semitism went dormant, for a season, it's now rising its ugly head through radical Islam. Well, I was astounded when I was in Eastern Europe right after the fall of the Berlin Wall to see how virulent anti-Semitism, uh, like in Romania, there may have been only three or four thousand Jews, and yet these people were absolutely uh, vehement against the Jews. And unfortunately, we're seeing that happen not just in Europe again, mm -hmm. but in the United States as well. During Operation Cast Lead, we documented 29 nations that held violent anti-Israel demonstrations, not with just a couple hundred people protesting. There were thousands of people in these streets. In the United States, we documented 15 cities that had violent anti-Israel demonstrations with hundreds and sometimes thousands of people. Look at what's happening on our university campuses. Who, who are the instigators? It's the radical Islamic extremists. They are. It's the far right. Um, and it's the left. The right all, and left? The far right. <clears throat> mm. Yes, the, the Ku Klux Klan, the white yeah. supremacists. Okay. And the left. We have people like George Soros who are funding this well, against, their own, against his own people. Against his own? I mean, he's funding this stuff? Against Soros? his own people. The anti-Israel sentiment, the anti-Zionist sentiment. It is time for the church, Mr. Robertson, to rise up mm -hmm. and take a stand against this and challenge our leaders, our government, the Secretary of State, and our president, and let him know we will not sit silently by yeah. while he continues to divide the land that God calls his. Well, you're very courageous in saying these things, and I, I hope you have a listening audience. It, th this is your film. This uh, is the documentary. The Forgotten People. Yes, sir. Christianity and the Holocaust. Where do you get it? You can order it online at pjtn.org, or I believe if, they, if your listeners will connect to cbn.org, they'll find out how to order it as well. Right, the forgotten people. What you're doing is very important. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid your message might not be heeded, but nevertheless, I, I hope people will listen to you. It's time to take a stand. Yeah. I'm looking for new recruits. Amen. Well, they're out here, so folks, join the Army.
God bless you. Thank God you. Bless you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time. Okay. Well, you heard it here. It's it's happening, but we couldn't stand another Holocaust. But it looks like it's coming up to that. I mean, the the. Uh, the United Nations has issued more proclamations against Israel than any other country in the world. They just continue to pour them out, and the radical Muslims have got control of the General Assembly, and they they just uh, you know manipulating that uh, organization for their own ends. Well, Terry, with that in mind, let's see what's next. Well, up next, a lost snowboarder in the fight for his life. I remember looking at my feet going, you're going to lose your feet, and then the next thought was, you're not as tough as you think you are. See how he survived after this. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened, in Israel. Come sail the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus calmed a raging storm. Experience Jerusalem, where Jesus restored a paralyzed man. Explore Capernaum, where Jesus spoke a centurion servant into help. To learn more about standing where it all happened in Israel, visit GoIsrael.com. Come visit Israel. You'll never be the same. Critics everywhere are praising Letters to God. One of the best films you and your family will see all year. I'm God's a warrior. I am so proud of you. A tribute to faith, hope, and love. I just want everybody to believe. A must-see. I know God's been reading your letters. One of the most inspiring movies. You did this. You helped me find the truth. Letters to God. Rated PG. In theaters Friday. People Magazine called it one of the world's most incredible survival stories. For eight days, Eric Lamarck battled hunger, dehydration, and sub-zero temperatures and inched his way up a 12,000-foot mountain. Rescuers call him the Miracle Man. What they don't know was that Eric's mother was with him every step of the way.
Apostle Paul said, the things that I counted gain uh, are nothing. I count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. And Eric found the same thing. Oh, but folks, would you want to have a tragedy? Would you want to lose your feet, lose your hand, lose your hearing or your sight, lose a loved one, be brought to the edge of death? Would you want to have something like that happen to you? You say, no, well, of course not. Well, it took that with Eric. He was self-sufficient. He was a well-known hockey player. He was a pro. He was healthy. And sure, he could sample drugs to get a high, but he didn't need God until God in his love brought him to the place where he had to look up and cry out to him. He went out of that experience less than what he had gone in, but he received so much more. And the so, so much more is Jesus Christ himself. And I counsel you right now, if you don't know him, don't wait for some tragedy to happen in your life until you sort of look up and say, God, I've got to ask your help. By then it may be too late. But right now, while there is peace, while there is calm, while you're in control of your faculties, I want you to do something for me. I want you to listen to what I'm saying with my mouth, and I want you to say these words, but I want you to mean them in your heart. And I want you to pray with me right now. Don't be afraid, wherever you are, right now, husbands and wives, children, boys, girls, parents, whoever, pray with me right now. These words, do it, don't go anywhere, right now. Jesus, that's right, pray it and mean it. Jesus, you know the kind of life I've lived. I felt I was in charge. And I didn't need you. But Jesus, right now, I acknowledge to you that I'm a sinner. I acknowledge to you, Jesus, that I have not been living for you. I confess the sins that I have committed against you. And I ask that you might come into my heart, that you might live in me. And from this moment on, take me as yours. I am yours, Lord, and I receive you as mine. From this moment on, I belong to you, and I thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. Now, for those who prayed, that's a major step you've just made. But, you know, you want to know what do you do next? Well, I, I have a CD I did. Uh, it's about 73 minutes of teaching. What happens to you when you are born again? What is it about a new life that God will give you? What about his coming back again? What about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What happens if you sin? How do you get rid of it? What do you do? Well, I'll give you this, a new day that will tell you the answers to these questions, very important questions. You need to get started because you're just starting on a journey. And the Lord's Spirit is with you. So I'm going to ask you, please go to the telephone and call. This little packet here in New Day is free. We'll give it to you free. If you don't want to give us your name, that's fine. Uh, so just call anyhow. Say, I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to the Lord. But if you would give us your name, we would be glad to send you this to be a blessing in your life. No charge, no fees, nothing. It's all free. The telephone number is free, one 800 Seven five nine zero seven hundred. Call in. We continue the seven hundred club, and here's Terry. Well, still ahead, we've got mail. Valerie writes, "There's a guy in our office who's always lying to my boss and taking credit for other people's work. Several of us have just about had it with him. What should we do?" We'll bring it on with that question and more later on today's seven hundred club. Too often, we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? 
You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. All over the world, there are minds to inspire and opportunities for change. At Regent University, we prepare you to become a Christian leader and guide others in all walks of life. And with online classes from Regent, you can change the world. From anywhere in the world, Regent University, online education with a solid foundation. Visit anywhere.regent.edu or call 866-REGENT-U to request your welcome kit. Welcome to Washington for this CBN News Break. Iran is threatening to strike American troops in the Middle East if threatened militarily. Major General Hassan Farizabadi also warned a military strike would threaten oil supplies. This comes as President Obama urged the United Nations Security Council to back sanctions to curb Iran's nuclear program. Iran has extended the same warning to Israel. An American described as a devout Christian has been sentenced to eight years of hard labor by North Korea. Ajalan Mali Gomez is from Boston and teaches English in South Korea. He was photographed in early January at a human rights protest at the demilitarized zone between the North and South. He was detained by North Korea two weeks later. Experts believe he could be released as a bargaining chip with the U.S. over North Korea's nuclear program. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBN.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Hi, I'm Dr. Joyce Brothers. Those of us who are independent and live alone shouldn't do so without having emergency protection. And for reliability and peace of mind, I recommend Alert USA. With Alert USA, if you ever need assistance, just press your pendant to be connected to an operator who can summon help to your home 24 hours a day. I've been giving advice for many years, and I believe Alert USA provides the best emergency support and value for your dollar. Call now for a free brochure. You did everything right. You saved for the future, but like so many, you've seen your investments decline. And although the markets have recovered some of their losses, analysts predict they will remain volatile for many years. Hi, I'm Scott Winters. As investors, we are seeing increased government spending and the potential for inflation. That's why it's important to be diversified. Consider gold as a way to diversify your investments. I'm a gold line client and have been investing in gold for over 10 years. Gold is a trusted asset that I can see and touch. Gold is an investment choice for those who want to protect against inflation and a falling dollar. And unlike the dollar, the government can't print more gold. Call Goldline, a company with more than half a billion dollars in annual sales. A reliable source for helping people acquire gold for nearly 50 years. Call Goldline now. Ask for your free investor's kit and make gold part of your portfolio. In some parts of India, villagers are putting their lives on the line just for a bucket of water. While I was lowering my bucket into the well, my feet suddenly slipped. I fell into the well and hit my back on a stone. Lakshmi's spine was permanently injured making it impossible for her to stand without intense pain. From then on, her husband Kailash had to cook, clean, and get their children ready for school before heading off to work. To make matters worse, there was no clean drinking water near their home. It took me an hour to get water, which made it tough for me to do all the chores and take care of my wife. Many times I had to stay at home instead of going to work. Kailash and Lakshmi were Hindu, but when the local pastor stopped by their home, Kailash told him about the challenges of getting water. The pastor prayed with them and wrote a letter to Operation Blessing. Soon, Operation Blessing's Living Waters team came and dug a well for their village. A hand pump was installed, making it safe and easy to get water. After that, Kailash wanted to know more about Jesus and read the Bible. It truly changed his heart. When I accepted Jesus, I was at peace. I am a new creation. Kailash wanted to show everyone he was following Jesus, so he was baptized. Laxmi and many others in their village also became Christians after Operation Blessing dug the well. 
Now, every Sunday morning, Kailash and Laxmi open their home for church services. God has given us this well, and I am grateful to Him. I am so thankful to Operation Blessing for the well you drilled close to my home. Now, I have time to take care of my wife and go to work. There is peace in our home. Fresh, clean drinking water, not just for Kailash and Laxmi, but for their entire village. And look at the impact that it's made. Certainly, their lives have been drastically changed. But all of their lives have been changed as they've come to know the love of God. And it all happened because people like you were willing to take that message to them through the work that we do around the world. This is why we ask you to join the 700 Club, so that we can be making a difference in the lives of people like Kalish and Laxmi. There are people waiting, longing to know that there's more to life than the sheer existence they have with so little. We can make a difference in their day-to-day -day needs and in their eternity. Will you help us take that message to them? To join the 700 Club is 65 cents a day. It's $20 a month. But it makes a huge difference when we all link arms together to take this message of God's love. Will you call now and become a part of that? Our number is toll-free. It's 1-800-759-0700. And when you do, can I ask you to give through Pledge Express. It means your bank does all the work. It's called electronic monthly giving. You can stop it, start at any time that you want, but it saves us some administrative costs, and we can put even more of your gift right into the lives of people like this amazing couple. And our way of saying thank you for using Pledge Express is to send you Power for Life teachings each month. These are teachings we get here at CBN from Pat and from Gordon. We want to share them with you to bless your faith as well. So call now, 1-800-759-0700, or you can log on to cbn.com and join with us that way. Pat? I'll never forget the hole in the ground at one village that was their water source and on top of it was a green scum. Uh, it was so filthy, it was so nauseating and yet this is where these people had to drink and bathe and whatever they needed that this was their source of water. One thousand dollars buys a well and a well for a whole village. You can go in and drill a well, put the, put the pumps in, put the, the pipes in, and out comes fresh water. In this case, they had a hand pump, but they can get something. Instead of having to go through dangerous territory to, to drink up, bring up fetid water. So that's one of the things Operation Blessing does, what we do with World Reach. All over the world, ladies and gentlemen, there are people suffering. It's indescribable. If you live here in America, you, you, you probably are inconvenienced because they run out of something that you want at the grocery store. Yeah. They don't have grocery stores in those places. <laughs> That's you, right. you know, it's, yeah. So anyhow, twenty dollars a month, and you can be part of changing your world. Well, coming up next on the Seven Hundred Club, it's time to bring it on with your email. Nedra writes, "Quote: As a parent, I often have a check in my spirit about my teenagers and certain friends of theirs." Is this something that I should listen to, or am I just being overprotective? Well, we'll tackle that question and more later on today's 700 Club. Hey, man! If you love fresh garden tomatoes but hate digging, bending, and weeding, then get off the ground and grow your tomatoes upside down with the Topsy Turvy Tomato Planter. Only the original Topsy Turvy has our patented grow bag technology. The sun warms the planter like a greenhouse, so the root system explodes, giving you up to 30 pounds of delicious garden tomatoes with no digging or weeding. Perfect for small yards, patios, even your porch. So grow your tomatoes the easy way and get your Topsy Turvy today. Full product line available at the Home Depot. Some insurance companies try to lure you in with promises of big savings. What they may not tell you is how little their policies actually cover. That's why Nationwide Insurance helps you get the custom coverage you need. No more, no less. And could still save you an average of $43 every month on your auto policy. That's over $500 a year. Just call 888-869-2672, visit an agent, or go to Nationwide.com. So let's say you need a little more house coverage and a little more life coverage and a lot less car coverage just call 888-869-2672 with an on your side review we'll examine your unique situation to find the places we can help you save no matter how your needs change to see how you could save an average of $43 every month or over $500 a year call 888-869-2672 
Visit an agent or go to Nationwide.com for a quote today. Nationwide is on your side. Gary Morris never thought he could have a career in the music industry, but after several number one hits, that's exactly what happened. Gary also never dreamed of making it big in theater, but after landing the lead role in Broadway's play, number one play, that's exactly what happened to him, too. was about accepting. He finally was at a place where he was willing to accept God's grace. You know, God's grace is always there, but we need to be willing to accept it. We need to be willing to move into it, and that's an amazing story. What an extraordinary, I mean, it just doesn't happen that way. <laughs> it just doesn't. I mean, a country singer winds up the lead on a major Broadway production. It doesn't happen that way.
And Les Miserables is quite a, I mean, oh my uh, goodness, music, yes. I mean the, the, the vocal uh, range is extraordinary. Yes, Goodness gracious. He opens doors no man can close. Yeah. <laughs> I must confess, I didn't know about Gary till yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very impressed. All right. And you like country music. Well, I like country, but I, I can't record. I didn't hear wind under my sails. All right, yeah. go on. Okay. We have some email. We're going to take a few minutes to answer. This is Valerie who says, there's a guy in our office who's always taking the credit for other people's work. He lies to the boss, and she doesn't seem to see through him. Several of us have just about had it with him. Do you have any suggestions, Pat? A little devious, if you'd like a suggestion. <laughs> I recommend you set that uh, self-seeker up, that you get a project that is sure to fail. Not sure we want this on video. But and then, <laughs> then say, you know, oh, to the boss, oh, it's his idea, and we're so proud of him, and we're all supporting uh, this wonderful effort. And then when it blows up in his face, she'll say, oh, maybe he isn't so good after all. Uh, you don't think that's too too Christian? Uh, uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> You're out there on your own, Nick. Nick. I. <laughs> Nick. Well, what do you do? Other than that, you just wait for him yeah, to I, I don't a blow, know. blow hard or blow up sooner or later. Yeah. You know, but uh, it's it's pretty galling to have to live it through is, that day after yeah. day. All right. Okay, this is Nedra who says, as a parent, I often have a check in my spirit about my teenagers and certain friends of theirs or places they want to go. Is it something I should listen to, or am I just being overprotective? Well, Nedra, I don't know you. Some people are uh, overprotective. They're scared of their shadows, and they don't want their child to cross the street. And so you, sooner or later, you've got to let the kid go uh, to grow up. But on the other hand, there are uh, evil companions. There are places they shouldn't go. And uh, if you have a check in your spirit, assuming you are mature and understand what you're getting, uh, you need to counsel that person. And if need be, say no. Uh, I uh, had an older daughter, and, and she just insisted on going to a particular place, and she thought it was a worthwhile thing she was going to do. And I said, well, honey, uh, you go upstairs and you ask Jesus uh, what he wants you to do, and then you come back and tell me what he says. So she went upstairs, and a few minutes later she came down. I said, what did he say? She said, he said, don't go. And I said, all right, that's yeah. your answer. Thank but you, Lord. It wasn't, it wasn't an autocratic daddy saying, you know, and then she rebels against daddy. They don't rebel against Jesus in a sense because if you get them so that they, uh, what you need to do is wean your children away from you onto Jesus so that they walk with him, listen to him, and let him advise them. And once he gets advice from Jesus, he's perfect. So they're not going to find fault with him as being unfair. That's a wise word. Okay. Well, this is Barry who says, I know you talk about Israel a lot, but I'm not sure why. What does the Bible teach about the Jewish people and the nation of Israel that would be important to a Christian? Well, it's full of references to Jesus. We were talking earlier in the program about this so-called replacement theology. There are Christian theologians way back into the Middle Ages who said, well, the Christian church has replaced Israel in the Bible, but uh, there's no warrant for that in the Bible. Israel is Israel, the Christian church is the Christian church. And uh, I would recommend that you get the book of Romans, uh, that you read chapter 9 and 10 in Romans, see what it has to say all the way through that section. Uh, it talks about, has God forsaken his people that he knew? And Paul says, you know, God forbid. Uh, but they're precious because of the fathers, but they have, you have been grafted on to the uh, vine that came out of Abraham. But if he didn't spare the natural branches, think what he's going to do to you if you misbehave. So just honor Israel for the fact that we come from the root of Abraham, who Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were Jews. Well, it says there's a blessing commanded to those who pray for Israel. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'll bless those that bless you and curse those who curse you. I've, I've always, I've been taught that since I was a little boy. Mm -hmm. well, this is Anne Marie who says, I'm a college admissions counselor and I'm appalled at how many young women consider themselves unattractive. Why do so many fine young women view themselves so poorly and how can we help them to see the truth? Well, Get them some magazine besides 17 and let them read something that uh, shows normal people. Uh, you know, these airbrushed models that come out in these magazines and you see these, these uh, 
of perfectly formed creatures on television. Mm -hmm. And you know, the fact that they've got a personal trainer that works with them for an hour or two, and then they go to see the guy for a little nick, nip and tuck, and they've got liposuction, and they've got all kinds of makeup. And uh, the average person just doesn't look that way. And so these girls are measuring themselves against uh, a, a false perfection. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's. Uh, and you know, they, to... they need to hear, too, and I think often from their dads. Mm. that they're beautiful. You know, there's something in young teenage girls today. I see it in, in some of my own children that who are beautiful, mm -hmm. but you ju they just can't hear it in their own ears, and they need well, to hear it from people. Who look at people who have anorexia. I mean, they look in the mirror and they say, you're fat, and, and yeah. they may be perfectly mm -hmm. formed, but they, they, they starve themselves to death, and literally to death, because of this uh, thing going on in their minds, that they, they, they have this image. Well, folks, that's all the time we've got. Thanks for those questions. We leave you today with these words from uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. 2 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back tomorrow. Bye bye. Hi, I'm Terry Newson. I've had the privilege of traveling all around the world and seeing firsthand the difference you're making through your partnership. In Turkey, CBN partners are caring for orphans and teaching them computer skills so they can find good jobs when they become adults. In Haiti, you are there bringing much needed medicine, clean water and food to help the Haitian people through this disaster. All around the world, you bring the hope of Jesus Christ to people who have nowhere to turn. Just like you did for Dilcia, this little girl's cough turned into pneumonia, but her parents couldn't afford medicine. That's when you brought a medical clinic to their village and gave Dilcia the treatment that saved her life. Your monthly gift makes it possible to care for victims of disaster, feed the hungry, preach the gospel, and so much more. Please watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. Imagine giving someone hope for a better future. You do that every day, and it only happens because you were there.